Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn set to be sentenced this Tuesday for lying to the FBI. It comes as the special counsel sharply rebukes Flynn's legal team for suggesting that federal agents manipulated him into not telling the truth. This amid growing questions over how the FBI handled that interview. Joining me right now in an exclusive interview from the World Ag Expo in Tular, California, is House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. Mr. Chairman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. It's great to be here with a, you. A lot to talk about in this upcoming week. As we know that Jim Comey, Loretta Lynch, is headed to the, uh, to the Hill to testify, potentially Rod Rosenstein. I want to get your thoughts on all of that. But first, we heard about the sentencing for Michael Flynn. He will be sentenced this week. But there's a lot of debate on whether or not the conduct that the FBI uh, did in terms of getting him to uh, uh, say he lied was really uh, not good conduct. Tell me about that. There was a Wall Street Journal op-ed, and they said it was entrapment, that Michael Flynn was trapped into saying that he broke the law. Your reaction? Well, I think what was likely is, is that General Flynn was just out of money. If you look at some of the documentation that's come out in the last week, I think most notable is the one line that says that General Flynn actually knew that the agents must have had the transcripts. So look, General Flynn is the former head of the DIA. He, you know, 30 years of military service. He has to know when, when the, the agents start to talk about his conversations uh, with the Russian ambassador that they have the transcripts. Not to mention that, remember, that some of that had already leaked out. So General Flynn knows that they have the transcripts. So why is General Flynn going to lie about something that he knows they have exactly what he said? And it never made any sense from the beginning. I think what the more likely scenario is, is that General Flynn was out of money. How do we know that? Not because he's told me, but because he had to sell his house to pay his legal bills. And then what you've seen is even though it's been a year, basically, since he said, look, fine, I lied to you guys. You can bust me on this, knowing that he's not going to get any jail time. Mueller then comes out, does, says, oh, we're not going to give this guy any jail time. Well, knowing that for all this time, uh, likely this was just a way for General Flynn to just end the investigation against him. Because uh, other people were speculating that maybe he was worried that they would throw the book at his son. Um, that, that basically they put him in a corner uh, and, and coerced him into saying things like, I lied and broke the, the law. That's the way the Wall Street Journal writes it. The Journal editorial put out an article last week titled, The Flynn Entrapment. Uh, and it reads in part this, not a rich man after decades in uniform, Mr. Flynn pleaded guilty to avoid bankruptcy and spare his son from becoming a legal target. Mr. Flynn's filing does not take issue with the description of his offense, but the additional facts the Flynn defense team flags for the court raises doubts about FBI conduct. You've been investigating the FBI and the Department of Justice this entire year. What's your reaction to their conduct? Well, you know, one of the things is, is that we were actually never able to interview uh, the second FBI agent uh, that was there in the, in the interview. I would, we have Chuck Grassley, Senator Grassley, and his team have been asking to get those, the original FBI reports uh, that came out of that Flynn interview. So there's so much that's, that's out there that we need to know still that I, I am really hopeful that the judge didn't just receive this interview with Peter Strzok that you saw that, they, that he got on Friday afternoon. I really do hope that he actually got all the memorandums, all the memos, everything that was written uh, after that, because it was clear from all of our investigation that we have done that, uh, it, that the FBI agents who had interviewed Flynn did not think that General Flynn was lying, and then it doesn't pass a simple straight face test that General Flynn would lie uh, when he knows that they have the transcripts of his conversation with the Russian ambassador. Yeah, I want to get back to that because it appears that uh, Robert Mueller scrubbed the phones and we don't know what other texts are out there. But Jim Comey uh, suggested that he took advantage of what he perceived as a disorganized uh, administration. And he basically said the way we questioned Flynn was different than anything in the past. Watch this most recent interview. This is back on December 9th at the 92nd Street Y with James Comey. Watch. Something we, I probably wouldn't have done or maybe gotten away with in a more organized investigation, a more organized administration, in the George W. Bush administration, for example, or the Obama administration. In both of those administrations, there was process. And so if the FBI 
wanted to send agents into the White House itself to interview a senior official, you would work through the White House counsel and there'd be discussions and approvals and who would be there. And I thought it's early enough, let's just send a couple guys over. So he basically admits that this whole thing was planned, premeditated to just send agents in and hope that he doesn't have any lawyers around him. It's frightening, Maria, that the head of the FBI, who is on a 10-year appointment, the reason that we have 10-year appointments is that so that there is some continuity of government. So the job of the bureaucracy is, is to support no matter who the people decide wins the election. So whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, the bureaucracy there in Washington in the swamp should be there to support the administration, not take advantage of the administration. And that's why you, that's why you hear this, you know, called the swamp there in Washington, D.C. It's for exactly cases like this, where you have the FBI director who is on a 10-year term who decides he's going to take advantage uh, of a disorganized uh, transition going into Washington, as he put it. Uh, and that is, I think, above all else, that's alarming uh, that, that anybody in the federal bureaucracy would think that way. And I think that's why you're seeing so many Americans disillusioned with Washington. And in fact, I don't think you're going to, Donald Trump has done everything he can do to try to drain the swamp, as he calls it. Uh, I don't think any of that's going to happen until you start to get some of these agencies out of Washington, D.C. When you have 90 percent of the populace in Washington, D.C. and 90 percent of the workforce who vote extreme left and vote for Democrats, uh, you have an unsustainable system. And so I think it would be helpful to get, uh, you know, the EPA, uh, the Department of Interior, uh, some of these agencies out to maybe where, where the rest of America lives, and they might be a little closer to the people. So you just mentioned the so-called 302s, the reports uh, that you've been asking for for a year from the FBI and the DOJ. More reports, so-called 302s, were released on Friday, and the president tweeted about it. I want to show you what the president said over the weekend and this morning about these, uh, these reports, and then get your reaction to what you've seen and what is still missing. So the president tweeted this, so where are all of the missing text messages between fired FBI agents Peter Strzok and the lovely Lisa Page, his lover? just reported that they have been erased and wiped clean. What an outrage as the totally compromised and conflicted witch hunt moves ever so slowly forward. Want them. What happened here, Congressman? My guess is, is that the Mueller team, they had to get rid of Page and Strzok because uh, the IG discovered that they were uh, biased against, uh, against the, uh, the White House and the people that they were investigating. Uh, and so I think it was a simple matter of what we've seen uh, DOJ and FBI do in numerous cases here is that they, they quickly move to hide the ball uh, and cover up their tracks, uh, hoping that no one would actually catch them in this. And, and you know, the fact that you know that you have two biased agents and you would, you would erase any of their phones, what should have immediately happened is, is those phones, you know, any dedicated public servant would have said, look, I'm not going to obstruct any investigation. These employees did wrong. Those phones should have been, uh, been turned over immediately to the IG so the IG could conduct an investigation. Since they did not do that, uh, you have to wonder. I mean, these are sophisticated operators, some of the best operators that we have in all of government that have worked at DOJ and FBI for a long time. The fact that they wouldn't turn these over uh, is just an, a, another alarming fact and a disturbing set of facts that continues uh, in this whole fiasco. It's just extraordinary, which is why then the Wall Street Journal came out with another op-ed uh, titled checking Robert Mueller. Uh, a judge brings to light the FBI's dodgy conduct in the Michael Flynn case, writes Kimberly Strassel. Now, you, you want to break some news this morning in terms of what you're going to be calling for in the new Congress to try to get your arms around this, this stream of information that the American people have yet to see. Tell us about what you're going to be calling for in 2019. Well, well, thank you, Marie. And as you know, uh, we, you know, I've said this uh, here in the last month, or actually a couple of months, our investigation is essentially over. We have everything that, that we need. Uh, what we're lacking now is we're lacking the declassification by the president. 
and for various reasons the president or his staff doesn't want to do it. Uh, therefore, I think it's important if the president doesn't want his hands on it, we have to have somebody, some office that's going to look at all of these issues and all of these documents that need to be declassified. I think if the president was to create uh, some type of office like this, I'm going to be working with, with my colleagues uh, to, to work on and send some, some example over to the president of a transparency type of office so that, so that the Congress, the American people, others can put in requests of documents or issues uh, that they want declassified. That way the president uh, doesn't have to take this full burden, full burden on and the Congress has somewhere where we can go to uh, to try to avoid the swamp creatures, uh, let's say, from getting involved in ensuring that the American public is kept in the dark. Uh, we need to make sure that there's light. Uh, I always say that, uh, that sunlight is the best dis disinfectant in Washington. Uh, the more that we can get declassified, I think the better. And I think a, an easy way to do it is to create an office that actually uh, just works directly under the White House that specializes in evaluating this documentation to get and in, in errors on the side of the more sunlight, the better, to make sure that everything that we want declassified gets declassified. Well, we've spoken with you all year as you have been doing this investigation into the FBI's handling of this uh, probe into uh, the Trump campaign and potential collusion alongside the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails. And we know that Robert Mueller was running the FBI during the time that the Clinton Global Initiative was, was, was uh, operating, now you've got whistleblowers coming out on the Clinton Global Initiative and the Clinton Foundation. Most people don't realize that these are all the same players who were actually running things at the government agencies that are now investigating that same thing, like Robert Mueller. Wh what do you know about Robert Mueller's probe right. and when it is ending? Well, I have no idea when it's ending. Uh, it needs, I've said this for months now, it needs to end soon because it's destroying America. Uh, you, have, you have over 40% of the American people believe that the Trump campaign colluded with Russians, even though there is not one shred of evidence that that happened. And in fact, the only evidence that we know for sure is that the Democrats and the Hillary campaign colluded directly with Russians. Okay, by hiring a foreign agent to go talk to Russians to get dirt on the other candidate. The same is true uh, for the, this, this Clinton Foundation investigation. Let's not forget that one of the lawyers for the Clinton Foundation is serving on Mueller's team looking into the president. Let's also not forget that, that you had the Clinton Foundation taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from not just Russians, but other countries, and at the same time, why those countries had business before the State Department when Hillary Clinton was there. So there's, there's, all, there's all kinds of circumstantial evidence. Uh, you know, we've been looking, this, looking at this under the direction of Peter King, uh, our, my colleague on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, we, have, we have, you know, lots of, of things that look really bad, uh, but at the end of the day, until you get either a special counsel or, or someone in the Department of Justice who's going to be able to oper operate with autonomy right. to actually go in and bring this and prosecute it, uh, I think justice is still going to continue to be denied. So I'm hopeful that someone within DOJ is looking at this, uh, but uh, I don't have a lot of confidence right now after the last couple of years of what I've been seeing. So we don't have a peep on any of that where we actually have news and evidence of wrongdoing, and yet every portion of the president's life is under the microscope being investigated from his personal transactions to his business transactions. Just extraordinary, actually.